So for the second talk today, we have uh, Lue Pan from Princeton, who will talk about some differential operators on the modular curve with infinite level at P and applications. Okay, so many thanks uh, for the invitation. Um, uh, it's a great honor to speak here. Um, uh, I remember the, the first time I had a chance to talk with uh, Peter, Peter Schultz, uh, say in 2017, Arizona Winter School. And uh, at that time I asked him some questions about his functor in Piedic local, long, local long lens correspondence. I asked something about the ROM representations. Uh, and he suggested uh, first to look at Hodge state representations. Um, uh, to be honest, I wasn't very convinced at that time, uh, but now, now I think uh, Peter is correct. Um, and I hope uh, this will also be clear for the audience after this talk. Um, yeah, so uh, I want to talk about some, um, I want to uh, talk about to be short, just uh, construct some intertwining operators. Um, so let me first uh, give a, an application uh, of this. Uh, so. Um, so first, uh, uh, let's consider the uh, the complete cohomology. So fix uh, KP, uh, which is a um, open compact subgroup of a GL2 finite Adele away from P. Uh, then if we have an open subgroup, open compact subgroup of GL2 QP, um, uh, we can look at the modular curve, the upper P, K lower P. Uh, this is a daily modular curve uh, with level uh, K, K over P, K over P. So it's uh, defined over Q. Uh, I can base change to Q bar uh, and uh, take its atop homology. Take the torsion coefficient. Uh, now, if I vary the level at P, um, so just to, uh, take the direct limit over O of compact open subgroup of GL2 QP and take the inverse limit over N. Uh, then this is uh, int was introduced by Hamilton called the complete cohomology, so, denoted by H tilde I K over P Z P here. Um, so it, it's, it looks slightly uh, quite complicated, but uh, in this case, uh, it has a simpler definition. It's just you take the the direct limits over um, of the ZP coefficient eta cohomology uh, of a finite level module curve. And you take the PID completion uh, of this direct limit and you get the same thing here. Okay, so because uh, uh, there's no level at P now, so it has a natural action of GL to QP. Um, also, because uh, uh, all the modular curves are defined over Q, so you also have a Galois action. So, so GQ denotes uh, the absolute Galois group of Q. Um, so for simplicity, uh, let me use H tuta to denote uh, the first uh, complete cohomology uh, tensor with uh, QP. So. So this is a periodic Banach space. Um, so, so you can ask, uh, so, uh, because it has an action of a GQ, you can ask uh, what Galois representations appear in this H, H tilde. So this is an infinite dimensional space. So it's very large. Um, so serum. So suppose we start uh, with a two-dimensional Galois representation. So, so for, for simplicity, let me just assume uh, the field of coefficient is QP, but in general, we can allow a finite extension. So let's suppose uh, 
uh, row appears in, uh, sorry, I forgot to say, let's say continuous and irreducible or absolutely irreducible. Uh, so suppose it appears in H tuta, or concretely it means that if you look at home row to H tuta, um, this is non-zero. And we assume that at P uh, is the ROM of, re of uh, regular uh, hot state weight. So, it's the ROM uh, of hot state weight um, zero and K, where K is a positive integer. In particular, it's regular. Um, then, so from the major conjecture, predicted that uh, such a uh, lower representation comes from modular form. And uh, this is uh, the, so the statement, the claim here. So then row arises um, from an eigenform of weight k plus one. Okay, so this is a, a really a special case of a fundamental conjecture. So uh, this result is not new in this case, uh, but uh, we, we give a sort of a new proof here. So make some remark. Uh, remark. Uh, I guess in this uh, special case, at least a generic in a generic case, this was known by uh, known by Emerton. And in his proof, uh, uh, he used his uh, local global compatibility um, plus uh, uh, people's work on um, piadic local long lens for GL2QP. So piadic local long lens correspondence for GL2QP. Uh, and also, uh, this I should say that this result uh, is a one main um, step uh, in Hamilton's proof of uh, fundamental conjecture, at least in the generic case. Uh, so I want to remark here that uh, uh, our proof um, does not use uh, piadic local lines correspondence. So we do not use. Um, and so uh, basically, our, our, uh, you will see that uh, the, the main ingredient is very geometric. Um, so it's possible. So I haven't checked uh, all the details yet, but I think uh, it is possible that you can really re replace module curve. Uh, by a Shimura curve. Uh, over some totally real F uh, with no restrictions at P. Uh, so here, uh, uh, when there's a restriction, I mean, either um, we don't have any restriction uh, for P in F, so we don't need it to be completely split. So it can be ramified or unramified. Um, um, we, we have no requirement on that. And also, um, I think it's possible that she, um, um, you don't have uh, you don't have any restriction for the Cartesian algebra at P. So, um, um, so uh, in fact, uh, um, we also can say something for um, for this home space. So, moreover, uh, we can something for for this. Uh, let me denote by H tuta row. So the row isotp part. Uh, we can prove something. So, uh, so the full statement is a little bit long. So uh, for simplicity, uh, for simplicity, let me just uh, 
uh, state one result here is that uh, so it has an action of gl to qp uh, so it's a banner representation so you can take the locally analytic vectors inside uh, but if you want so if you fix an open compact subgroup kp uh, you can just look at the kp analytic vectors inside okay and uh, also now because there's a uh, they are analytic vectors, so the Lie algebra acts on them. Uh, so let you can consider n, which is this uh, it's the new potent subalgebra inside GL2QP. Uh, and you can look at the n invariance uh, here. Um, and what we can show is that um, this is a finite dimensional vector space. So, uh, so we can show some uh, prove some uh, finiteness result uh, for this uh, uh, isotopic part. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in the rest of the, this talk, I want to uh, just talk about uh, one main ingredient in the proof of uh, this um, theorem. That's the intertwining operator uh, in the title. Uh, sorry, um, in title here. Uh, so to do this, uh, so let me first recall what is, what is the uh, Hodge state representation and the Durham representation. So um, Hodge state and Durham representations. Um, so let's say we have a two-dimensional Galois representation of GQP. So it acts on a V, which is the two-dimensional uh, vector space uh, over some E, where E is a finite extension of QP. Okay. Um, and we say V is Hodge state uh, of weights zero k where k again we assume it's a positive uh, integer so that uh, this is uh, in the regular case uh, if the v tensor with cp let me call it w has a hot state decomposition has a decomposition w0 plus wk where this w0 is the hot state weight zero part and this is Hodge state with the k part. Uh, so here I forgot to see, say that CP as usual denotes the PID completion of the of QP bar algebraic closure of QP. Um, so so by Hodge state zero part, I really mean that as usual is just uh, if you take the GQP invariance uh, and you tensor with CP, you just get back W zero. So. Uh, it's just generated by uh, the, the GQP invariance. So I forgot to say here, I, I really need to require that both are non zero. And the Hodge state with K parts are uh, here. I, the convention I use is that if you twist by K's uh, power of a cyclotomic character, uh, then it has Hodge state with zero. So, yeah. so this, this is Hodge state of weight zero. Okay, um, so this is uh, uh, so for Hodge state representation, it simply means that you have this decomposition. Uh, now we say V is the ROM, of weights in zero K. Uh, if so, first uh, V is Hodge state of weights at zero and K. And secondly, so, uh, so usually people use the definition that if you take, uh, if you tensor with the beta on period ring um, introduced by Fontaine and uh, you take the GQP invariance, uh, then the dimension uh, is equal to the dimension of V, uh, which is just two in this case. Uh, but I must say, so uh, this is not quite useful for our purpose. Uh, 
Um, um, so uh, in Fondant's uh, classification of uh, almost the ROM representations, he gives another characterization uh, of uh, we being the ROM. So, so he constructs a natural operator. Um, and let me call you NW uh, from the hot sheet with zero part to the hot sheet with K part. Uh, of course, so if they have different ways, uh, you don't expect that there's such a uh, natural operator. So, so here you need to twist the uh, um, by case uh, cyclotomic character so that uh, both a uh, hot sheet with zero uh, and so as the notation suggests that uh, you should really think this is some kind of monodromy operator. Um, um, and in this talk, I simply call it Fontaine operator here. Um, and Fontaine also shows that uh, the uh, V is the ROM. So two here is equivalent with NW is zero. So the ROM means that there is no monodromy. Um, Okay, so uh, uh, we will use uh, this point of view. Um, um, so now let's try to apply this to complete cohomology. So apply to H2. Ta. So what we are going to do is that, so first we have the H2, ta, the first uh, complete cohomology. Uh, uh, we will define, uh, we will cut out the subspace, let me denote it by H tilde, how state is zero K. So you should think this is a subspace which consists of uh, how state uh, representation, uh, represent, representations which are how state of, uh, of weights zero and K. So more precisely, uh, it should have the property that if rho appears uh, in H tilde and Rho is hot state of weights zero and k, and uh, you want this. Uh, these two conditions will imply that the rho actually appears uh, in this uh, H two to hot state zero k. Okay, and then we would like to cut out an even smaller subspace, um, which contains the ROM representations of uh, weight zero and k. Uh, so the, the, here I put a quotation mark here because they actually is, it will not be a subspace, uh, but it will be a subspace after we extend the, the coefficient to CP. Um, so now how to construct uh, these two spaces. So first uh, for this Hodge state, uh, um, uh, one, um, so the idea is that uh, so because uh, you have an uh, action of GL2QP, you can consider the locally analytic vectors inside. Um, so locally analytic vectors. And now you. you the Lie algebra acts on it. So let me use, so the Lie algebra of GL2QP, but it's just GL2QP. And let me denote it by G here. So in particular, uh, you can consider the, the action of the center of the universal Hamiltonian algebra of, C, of G. So let me use Z to denote the center of UG. <coughs> And now let me take an infinitesimal character, call it theta k, um, to be the infinitesimal character uh, of the k minus one symmetric power of the due of the standard representation of GL2QP. So just, uh, just take the infinitesimal character of a very specific uh, algebraic representation. Um, now, 
um, we can simply define this Hodge state the zero k part just to be the chi theta k SOTP part. Uh, and the reason that uh, uh, it satisfies the property I mentioned before uh, is that there is a relation between Hodge state weight and the infinitesimal characters. Uh, I first learned this result uh, uh, from a talk of uh, uh, Dospinescu. So, uh, um, so I think in his drawing board with uh, Dospinescu. Okay, so the hot sheet uh, uh, zero k part is just you just need to fix an infinitesimal character. Um, now, how to construct the, the Durham zero k subspace? So, the first observation is that actually this is. Um, um, there's a natural hot state decomposition of this space. Um, if you take the complicity tensor product with CP, so, so here, this is some LB space. So this complicity tensor product should be understood in some, um, in that sense. Uh, let me call it W. And there's a hot state decomposition This has hot state with zero, and this has hot state with a k, uh, which is universal in the sense that uh, uh, you can imagine that if you have a Galois representation rho inside, uh, then, well, uh, suppose it, uh, I mean it ha has hot state with zero and k, so you have a hot state decomposition uh, of rho, so rho tensor CP hot state with zero is inside this W zero and rho tensor. Hodge state with k part is inside this uh, wk. So, uh, so some kind of universal uh, Hodge state decomposition. And uh, if you believe that uh, the, the construction of von then uh, also can work in this uh, infinite dimensional situation, so uh, you can imagine that there is also a um, universal von den operator in this sense, uh, in this case. Mm. So, um, so let me denote by HK tuta from this Hodge state with zero part to case twist of Hodge state with k part. Um, and uh, by Fondens result, the uh, for a Durham rep uh, a representation is Durham if and only if uh, end up uh, the monodromy is zero. So it's reasonable to call this uh, the kernel of n tilde k to be over Durham zero k subspace. Okay, so now it remains. So we really cut out a, a subspace uh, that contains this Durham representations, and now. It, it's just it's re it rest to just study this subspace, uh, and then now the problem is how to study this. I mean, this Entuta case defined in some very abstract way. Uh, I even didn't tell you how con uh, Fontaine constructed this subreader even in the two-dimensional Galois representation case. Uh, so the answer is <clears throat> we will give another construction uh, of this Entuta case. Okay, so in the remaining uh, uh, time of this talk, uh, I plan to uh, uh, to explain how to construct uh, this uh, um, this operator uh, geometrically. Um, so to do this, I really need to uh, to use uh, uh, the infinite level modular curve. So. Perfect to a module curve. Uh, 
Um, so first, uh, uh, some notation. So uh, for modular curve YK, uh, so it has a, a natural compactification XK and we use curly XK on to denote the attic space uh, associated uh, to the base change of uh, XK to CP. Um, then, um, then Peter shows that discovered that, uh, so if you uh, fix uh, the level at P and, uh, sorry, level away from P and the vary the level away from P, then the inverse limit exists as some very nice uh, geometric object. Um, so let me use, denote this by curly X, XK upper P. So this is a perfectoid space. Um, and moreover, <clears throat> um, it creeps uh, with, uh, sorry, I forgot to say so. Uh, Okay. Um, it also equips uh, with a so-called Hodgson period map. Um, to the flag variety of uh, GL2. So in this case, uh, FL uh, is simply P1. Uh, and because this, uh, mm, there's no level at P now, so there's an action of GL2QP, and this Hodge-State period map is GL2QP equivalent. So. And of course, we have a projection uh, onto the final level modular curve, K upper P, K lower P. So let me use pi K lower P to denote this projection uh, so that, um, we have a tautological ample line bundle on P1. Uh, let me use O1 here, so such that pi Hodge state. If you pull back this tautological uh, ample line bundle, so, sorry, this one does not mean take twist here. Uh, uh, it's naturally uh, isomorphic to um, the pullback uh, of the automorphic line bundle omega to the infinite level. Uh, okay, so um, so this is a, so, uh, sort of a piatic picture. Um, so if you're not familiar with the piatic picture, uh, but you are very familiar with compact uh, complex picture. Uh, so so what is it? Uh, so the analog of uh, this infinite level uh, module curve, uh, of course, is some kind of uh, covering. Um, of module curve, so in the complex cases, some you can uh, you should regard it as uh, you regard this as some universal covering of module curve, which is just upper half plane. Uh, and the reason that uh, we we regard as a subspace of P one is because we already use the Borel embedding, and but of course it. You can you also use an anti-holomorphic embedding. So just you can embed into P1, but use Z maps to Z bar. So this is the anti-holomorphic Borel embedding. Um, and of course you have a projection onto uh, just quotient by some some level gamma. So, so this picture should be considered as a piatic analog of uh, this picture here. Uh, and if you are not, if you don't like anti-holomorphic uh, stuff, I mean, if you prefer to stay in the world of algebraic geometry or uh, or holomorphic world, so there's an, I find, uh, Another analog quite useful is that, uh, so if you remember, so 
H is really SL2R mod SO2. Uh, and oh, SO2R, so you can also consider this picture. So SL2C um, mod SO2C. Um, sorry, the notation might not be very. And then because, uh, so this you should think as uh, some Cardan sub out, subgroup, and you can find two Borel uh, subgroups are containing it. Um, and one, you, you just get uh, the Borel embedding. Uh, and if you use uh, the other one, you just get uh, the anti holomorphic uh, Borel embedding. Um, so this picture, uh, well, now you're in the world of algebra geometry. Um, uh, I found, I mean, quite useful to think about um, um, this picture. Uh, so uh, uh, let me go back to the, sorry, sorry. Let me go back to, to this, uh, um, to this Hodge-Tay period map. So uh, Sosa also proved that uh, um, you can read, uh, you can recover the completed co cohomology from this picture as long as you extend your coefficients to CP. So Sosa also proved that so if you let OK upper P be the push forward of the structure sheaf of the, the infinite level modular curve. So this is a sheaf on the flag variety. Uh, then there's a natural uh, isomorphism between um, the the cohomology um, of the sheaf uh, with the CP coefficient completed cohomology. So HI theta QP CP, and you take the completed tensor product with CP. Uh, so it, in particular, so for H1, um, you just get H tuta completed tensor product with CP here. Um, but if you remember, so uh, in the definition of a hot state, the zero K part, the first thing we do is to take the locally analytic vectors. So we also need to, need to do this here. Um, so recall that the pi hot state is a GL2 QP equivalent. So in particular, uh, this is a GL2 QP equivalent sheaf on P1. Um, so we can take the sub sheaf, which contains uh, GL2QP uh, locally analytic sections. Um, and then um, this is a theorem uh, I proved uh, last year uh, that then uh, the isomorphism here uh, naturally induce an isomorphism between the cohomology of this uh, subsheaf and when you pass to the locally analytic vectors uh, in the in the completed cohomology. Okay. So now whatever operations we want to do here, we can try, we already sort of write it as a cohomology of some sheaf cohomology. So we can try to um, do it on the sheaf level. So, um, um, so now we're going to, so, um, to, to I don't know, do some operations to, uh, to apply some operators to uh, this sheaf. Uh, so the first ob observation is that actually this sheaf uh, it satisfies some uh, first order differential a differential equation. Um, so because uh, all the sections are uh, to QP uh, are locally analytic vectors. So, so you have an action of the Lie algebra. So let me call it G here. Uh, on the other hand, so the, the structure sheaf of the, 
uh, of the flag variety is a sub chiffon. In, so recall this, uh, this is a chiffon on the flag variety. So in particular, so the tensor product um, uh, X uh, on this sheaf. So let me call this G zero, this tensor product. So this is a trivial vector bundle on the flag variety, uh, but it has some non-trivial sub vector bundle. So, so recall that the flag variety uh, parametrizes Borel subalgebra in GL2. So in particular for each classical point, um, you have a corresponding Borel subalgebra denoted by Bx inside GL2CP and a corresponding neopotent uh, subalgebra, which is denoted by Nx. Um, then you can consider the horizontal uh, Borel subalgebra, which, which is just F inside G, G naught, so that such that the Fx at each, uh, each fiber is inside Bx. And similarly, you can define uh, the horizontal neopotent subalgebra. So F in G naught such that uh, Fx inside Nx at each point. So this N naught is a, is a line bundle uh, on the flat variety. And and it turns out that the, this N not annihilates um, this sheaf. Um, so another way to say this is that so, so this is a line bundle. So you should think this sheaf satisfy a, a first order of differential equation. Okay. Um, so. Um, if you're familiar with uh, uh, the theory of uh, uh, of localization so discovered by Benjamin Bernstein, uh, you sort of recognize that now you, you, you this basically implies that differential operators on the flag variety uh, um, act uh, on the shift. Um, first, let me say one corollary here is that the action of B not uh, on the shift now factors through the quotient. So it acts on the shift. Um, but what is this quotient? So at each point there is uh, the Borel subalgebra, uh, sorry, uh, it's a Borel subalgebra quotient by its neopotent part. So essentially you can identify it with the Cardan subalgebra. So it turns out that uh, this quotient as a vector bundle is just trivial on the flag variety. So if I fix um, a Borel subalgebra, so let me just take the usual diagonal one uh, inside the Borel, tri upper triangular Borel subalgebra, then you can identify this quotient with H tensor with OFL. So in particular, you get the embedding uh, from H to this uh, to this sheaf, so you get an action of H uh, on uh, this OLKP. So you get an action. Let me call it theta H of this action. Um, this is uh, uh, so you get an action of a Cartan subalgebra acting on the sheaf. It's not uh, just induced from the I mean, the, uh, the, the group action. Um, so, um, so, so what is this action? Sorry, what is this action? Um, so, sorry, actually from, you have two point of view of uh, this uh, action. From the representation theoretic point of view, um, it essentially gives you the information of the infinitesimal character. Or the um, sorry, it's closely related to the action 
uh, action of Z. If you remember, so Z uh, is the center of the universal enveloping algebra. So, so I mean, this basic essentially follows from the harris chenda isomorphism. Um, and so in some sense uh, that is closely related to the infinitesimal character of GL2. Um, on, their, on the other hand, this action is also closely related to the infinitesimal character uh, of GQP. So what is the infinitesimal character of GQP is it's just the sin operator. So, uh, so of sin operator, which uh, you can regard as an element inside the center of the Lie algebra of GQP tensor with CP. Okay, um, I don't want to be too precise here, but uh, it's closely related to the sin operator um, here. So, uh, so in some sense, it, it tells you the piadic uh structure uh, on the sheaf. So, uh, so let me give you one example here. Um, um, so if you take the character, so if you take this character, Kai, so this weight, um, sorry, I go to N1, N2, uh, both are integers, which says, a D to A and one plus D and two. Um, and you can look at the chi isotypic part. Um, it turns out that uh, if you look at the action of the, uh, of the, of the, the center of the universal enveloping algebra, so it has infinitesimal Infinitesimal character. Um, so by Harry Chandra, I can I, I just identify with an uh, orbit uh, of weights under the under the dot action of a uh, well group. Uh, it's given by n two n one n one minus one n two plus one. Um, uh, on the other hand, um, if you are interested in the hot state um, structure, then it turns out that, that this is a hot state of weight uh, minus N2. Um, so here I really mean that if you take a cosy compact uh, open sub, uh, subset of uh, flag variety and you look at sections on that open subset and and uh, then it has a hot state structure. Okay, so, um, so now uh, let me come back to, um, uh, let's back, let me come back to this. Uh, so if you remember, so we have this, uh, Um, so LA chi tilde k, if you remember, this is our uh, hot state uh, zero k subspace. And if you remember, I claim that if you take the completed tensor product with CP, uh, I remember I call it W, and then it has a hot state decomposition W0 and WK. Uh, now, in fact, uh, these. <clears throat> W0 and WK are naturally given by the cohomology of sheaf of uh, sheaves of uh, this form. So theorem, uh, let me assume K is at least two here because one K is equal to one, then the, 
uh, you will see some contribution from some of the, the H0 of the completed cohomology. I mean, it's not too hard to control that, but uh, uh, I really recommend you to ignore this and uh, just set, uh, just allow K to be one here. Um, but I just want to make sure that uh, what I'm going to write down is completely correct. So one K is at least two. Um, then it turns out that uh, W0 is naturally isomorphic to um, the first uh, cohomology of OLA KP, and you take the one minus K zero SOTP part, and WK is just given by um, OLA. You take the one minus K SOTP part. Um, so recall that W zero is Hodge state with zero part. So this zero uh, by our discussion here already implied this has Hodge state with zero. So uh, this has the correct Hodge state weight. Um, so now if you remember that we want to construct a, um, an operator from W zero to WK, um, Recall that n tilde k is an operator from w zero to w k. Case uh, take twist of w k. Um, the, then you can. It, it's natural to guess that uh, this operator actually for, comes from uh, an operator on the sheaf level. So we are going to construct uh, n k. Which is from one minus k zero isotp part to this one minus k part and twist by case uh, <coughs> twist by <coughs> case power of the cyclotomic character. Okay, uh, this is what we are going to do. Uh, I mean, uh, it's clear that uh, you basically want some operator from one way to another way. That, that's why I call it uh, intertwining operator. Final section, intertwining operator. So how to construct this operator? Um, so let me go back to this picture. So the infinite level, uh, Modular curve, we have uh, one uh, projection onto a finite level modular curve, IKP, and Hodge state period map to the fly variety, which is just P1. Okay, the idea is uh, somehow we can try to pull back differential operators from this uh, finite level. Uh, this algebraic variety. Uh, so, so the theorem, this is actually what we are going to do. So one K, uh, let me first I explain what, what's happening when K is equal to one. So, so, so one K is equal to one, then we essentially want an operator from the Hodge state with zero, zero part to Hodge state with, sorry, not Hodge state with, the weight zero, zero part to weight one minus one part. Uh, so we start with, start with weight zero, zero part. Okay, now uh, we try to use derivation uh, here. Sure. Okay, let me call it D here. Um, Tensor with omega one x, so shift of differential forms uh, on the finite level modular curves. Of course, uh, I mean the derivation. I mean the derivation here. Let me call it dx. You can only apply it to functions on finite level modular curve. You can't really apply it to 
I mean, functions here are sort of inf on the infinite level. Um, but it turns out that, that there is a, so, so you want this to extend the dx and you want it to commute with functions here. So another way to say this is OFL linear. Um, if we put these two uh, restrictions, then it turns out that there, there exists a unique uh, D here. So it turns out that this is unique. So there's a unique way to extend uh, the derivation here to to how uh, to weight zero zero part, uh, which is OFL linear. Uh, here, um, so this <clears throat> sorry omega one x. Uh, of course, the, this is a sheath on finite level module curve, but this is a sheath on P1. So uh, when I write this, I really mean um, you first uh, take the inverse image uh, of this sheath to the infinite level, then you put a push forward uh, along Hodge-Day period map. Um, so whenever I write sheath like this uh, on, on this side, I really mean I do this process, okay? Uh, so, so, the, so this is, uh, uh, so you apply, I mean, you apply derivation um, from the modular curves, but if you, if you believe that uh, this picture is actually symmetric, then you can also do this, this construction for, for this side. So in fact, that there exists a, so called D bar, uh, which goes to omega one FL. So you should, uh, it's easy to imagine that now it extends uh, the derivation on the flag variety. And moreover, you want it to be uh, sort of, it, to, it, it commutes with things happening on this side. So actually it's OX linear. And again, there exists such a, I mean, there's a unique D bar that satisfy these two conditions. Okay, so now we arrive at this, at this sheaf. Uh, now the observation is that uh, these two actually can, uh, are due to each other. Uh, so let me put a quotation mark here. So why? So there's a one, um, I don't know. One way to think about this uh, is that so so why um, so let me ignore cusps here. So if you put cusp, actually you should not put omega one x here. You should uh, take the log differential uh, forms. So <clears throat> let me ignore cusps here. Um, then. By Codera Spencer isomorphism, uh, the sheaf of differential form on the modular form on the modular curve uh, is isomorphic just to W2. So this is Codera Spencer uh, isomorphism. Um, on the other hand, what, what is omega 1 FL? So the flag variety is P1. So P1 is uh, uh, the, the, cano uh, the canonical bundle is, uh, uh, is anti, uh, I mean, it's negative. So it's just uh, O minus two. And if you remember, when I pull back O1 to the infinite level is just uh, equal to the pullback of omega one. So, uh, so you see some kind of duality here, um, but actually if you are careful enough, so uh, what you get is that 
OLA one minus one K up for P twist. Uh, and you have a, a T twist here. And the reason that you have a shift of weight is because uh, the, the differential forms on the flag variety actually, you, uh, it has weights. Um, and if you're uh, careful enough with uh, this isomorphism, then you will get a T twist. Um, and now let, let me call this comfort. I mean, it's reasonable to call this composite uh, just D bar composite with D. Uh, and the main, well, one main result here is that um, that N1, the differential, uh, uh, But the intertwining operator we are looking for uh, is just equal to um, the composite of D bar with D. And I guess it's also clear from uh, these conditions that the D and D bar commute with each other. Um, so it's actually also equal to D bar, sorry, it's D, D bar. Um, the reason, sorry, I've, uh, I just realized I forgot to explain why I call it D bar. It's just because it's the analog of an anti-holomorphic anti Borel embedding. So uh, if you call, use D for, uh, for, I mean, differential operators uh, put back from Borel embedding, uh, then I thought it might be natural to call D bar for differential operators put back from uh, Hot state period map. Um, and in general, um, so this is one case equal to one. Uh, it's easy to imagine that uh, N case is just given by D bar or to case power composite with D to case power or D to case power and D bar to case power. I mean, it's DK, I mean, uh, the case power of D appear naturally. I mean, so very classical in the study of a modular form is usually I think called theta operator uh, or case power of theta operator. Um, uh, I mean, appear naturally in, uh, in this BGG stuff. Um, yeah, so, um, so the conclusion is that the, sorry, I forgot to say so, and the differential so sorry, the Fontaine operator is just you apply uh, this to the cohomology group. Um, so, so, so why is it useful? Because I mean, the D bar and D, they are actually very concrete. They just take derivations along, I don't know, uh, each side. So it's very, uh, for the purpose of doing computations, it's sort of, uh, uh, quite, it's very, uh, you can really use it to compute uh, this operator. Um, so if you remember, uh, we, are, we are interested in the kernel of n tilde k. So now we can try to use uh, this expression to do these computations. Uh, so I still have two minutes. So uh, let me just give a very, just a quick sketch of a proof of the, of the main theorem. So. I mean, serum one. Sketch out proof of main serum. Um, uh, so the first thing is that recall that we, we need to understand this kernel of n tilde k. Uh, um, here, uh, so, so the first result we, we need is that uh, we fix some, uh, uh, some if we take an open compact subgroup of k lower p and we look at n finite vectors. So recall that n denotes this neopotent subalgebra. Uh, and it turns out that, that, that this is dense. Uh, inside, um, this KP analytic uh, uh, vectors. 
So this actually use some global argument. Actually, it needs I need to use some Poincaré duality here. Uh, I don't want to uh, see. Right. Uh, so and now the the second thing is a we really compute sort of compute this infinite part uh, using uh, this description. So basically, uh, it's essentially enough just to compute the n invariance here um, using um, our description of n k. Um, and I mean, uh, this, we will see, uh, I mean, using this description, we will see that actually this is finite dimensional. And uh, uh, the, the most important thing is that the hack action factors through its action on classical module forms. So we conclude that from these two facts that that uh, hack action on this uh, uh, factor through its action on classical module forms, and we get um, the claim in our first uh, um, theorem. So I, I think I'm already run out of time. So let me just stop here. Um, thank you. Well, thank you very much for a great talk. <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah, thanks. Oh. Uh, when you say global argument, it's it's not global in the, in the number field sense, right? It's still over the periodic. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I really, I need to use that. Uh, the from complete cohomology, you have Poincare duality. Um, yeah, this is what I need. Uh huh. Um, so I'm not sure. It, um, I mean, I, I, I call it global. It's because if you just study some local analog of this, uh, I don't know. I, I'm just not sure whether we have this Poincare duality. And because I'm so far all the maps and so on, they were somehow localizing on the flag variety. And so you're saying this this argument doesn't localize on the flag variety. So exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? So what prevents you from sort of going generalizing a little bit beyond rank one groups? Uh, uh, I don't think there's any. I I just really haven't thought about this. Um, but I do believe it should be possible in some form. I just don't know how to formulate um, formulate it for yeah, general groups. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Another kind of maybe more technical question was, so when you were discussing this duality, um, you're talking about this Cadaver Spencer thing. Mm, yeah. uh, I think yeah, I understood yeah. this kind of, yeah, the, this Cadaver Spencer picture like on the modular curve, but when you kind of take this differentials and put, pull it back and push it forward to the flag variety, are you, are you saying it looks the same? Like how are you uh, computing what this thing looks like? Uh, you're asking where, where does this come from? Or? Uh, so when you say like omega one is isomorphic to blah, 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 whatever spends yeah. isomorphism, you're talking about on P1 now, right? You mean this? One? Yeah. Um, this first on modular curve and you, yeah, you do this, you, you take the inverse image in the on the infinite to the infinite level, and you push forward. Yeah. And, and how are you, how are you computing what that thing looks like after you pull back and push it forward? Uh, I mean, basically. Um, yeah, I was actually confused by what you said there. I mean, do you really mean the tensor with the push forward of when you said omega one x should be like the push forward of the preimage, but you don't want tensor again with the push forward, right? Um, yeah, I mean. This here, I, I mean, it's tensor product with the push forward. I mean, with OX or this OX, the Anders do as the push forward of. Uh, I mean, isn't it some of the case that everything should be really cons considered as a sheaf on this infinite level modular curve, and then you're tensoring with, with line bundles that come from, where I pull back from either side? Um, I mean, I, I should say this not pull back, but you just take the pre image. Okay, okay, yes. But... Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to say that this duality is better to to understand in I don't know in this picture. 
Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, the the. I mean, the canonical bundle here and canonical bundle, they are canonical due to each other by killing form. And this is sort of mm -hmm. what it really says there. Sorry, does this answer your question? I, I think it helps, yeah. But I just want, so you're not literally saying that omega 1x, like when you pull, push it forward to P1, that it still looks like this kind of line. Yeah, not, not, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Got it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So probably everything should be understood on the infinite level. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I mean, you also had something for weight one modular forms in a different paper. So in what you said today, how, does this also adapt in some way to weight the weight one case? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, the short answer is, I don't know. Uh, Yes, I, um, yeah, I, I don't, um, uh, I guess uh, one reason is that uh, it's not, the weight one for my, uh, I can't really formulate that as some kind of kernel, like here it's just kernel of this n tuta k, uh, but for. Uh, okay, but before you, I mean, for the hot state part of this argument, this still works in weight one? Uh, which part? The hot state part, some of this kind of argument. And so they, uh, I mean, the, in uh, I guess this theorem here, this theorem oh, here. Yeah, then it's not a dark product. Uh, some, yeah, you have it will be an extension because hot state. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up to this part, it holds. And then you get an extension in the next thing, and then okay, then you have to. Yeah, then you will see an operator, and that's how I prove. Yeah, for with one, um, the classicality. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Are there any differences? I guess you mentioned that you do this for the modular curve, but also for Shimura curves. Um, are there any differences between these cases, or are they essentially the same? Um, yeah, I I just didn't check all the details, but I thought there might be there. Yeah, I don't think there is. So for Schmuck curve, each time you fix an embedding of your field into CP, and you just look at the behavior of that place, and and I thought at least for the computations, there there's really there's really no essential difference, mm -hmm. uh, and probably the the result you expect to prove is something like if it's the Rama for one embedding and uh, then the, it has locally algebraic vectors um, for that embedding. If you look at the locally analytic vectors, um, this is what I have in mind. And if you apply it to all the embeddings, then you just prove the classicality. So this is, I think is possible, but, um, but I really haven't written on anything. So I haven't checked all the details. So I don't want to claim that, but I think it's possible. Okay, thank you. All right, well, if uh, there are no more questions, let's thank Louis again. Great talk.